It's a good day here. It's new wheels and tyres day for the Freelander 2. Now, those of you who are subscribed to my channel will know I'm doing a bit of a facelift of this vehicle. And I had planned on putting these lovely spanking new wheels and tyres on as the very last job. But my hand has been forced a little bit because my tread is running low on these, but also I've managed to get myself somehow a little slow puncture on this near side front. So my hand has been forced. I will be sticking on these new wheels. Now, I had a look at new tyres uh, for the 17 inches that came with this car, the 2009 model, and uh, we were looking at about 115 pounds a quarter. So with fitting and everything else, it was gonna work out to be just under 500 quid. Managed to pick up these Evoke wheels in absolutely sparkling condition. I'm told I've opened one, but I've got three others bagged up uh, with brand new tyres on them. Uh, for the princey sum of 525 quid so it's cost me about 30 quid i reckon to get a brand new set of wheels and tires they are 18 inch uh, and uh, they do fit i've also checked with the insurance company admiral and i've got a uh, screen tap of the conversation i had with their online operative telling me that i needn't worry at all about insurance as they are a land rover fitment so uh, standard catalogue piece so off with the other wheels uh, let's get these open There we go. Pleased with those. Actually, they're all in good nick. There's a tiny bit of uh, curbing just on that one corner there, but actually, I'm over the moon with those. Properly chuffed. All right, so it's off with wheel number one. It's going to loosen the nuts. is more than enough. Let's get this thing off. Now the Land Rover aficionados out there will know this, but Evoke wheels like this are the same fitment as the Freelander 2 uh, in 99% of the geometry. Uh, the only slight difference is just the um, offset is marginally difference, but it's all standard fittings otherwise. It's the same stud pattern, same measurements, and fundamentally the same rolling uh, diameter as well and the circumference of the, of the tire. So, uh, so far as I'm concerned, these are an easy fit and a really commonplace modification for Freelander drivers. Do not get mistaken between Discovery Sport and uh, Freelander two wheels. They are not universally interchangeable. There are some that will work, but not all of them. These, I am assured, will fit perfectly. These evoke. Hand tight to start with. There we go. All right, let's see how we get on. And the reason I'm changing to these are I simply just wanted to fill the arches out a little bit more now and technically as I say the circumference is pretty much identical uh, all but a few millimetres but the 18 inch wheels do just suit the car nicer there are 19 inch wheels and there are free ladder drivers out there that will uh, happily show you their 20 or 22 inch on the extreme ones but uh, they just create a really really crap ride and these 18 inch wheels I think and rubber uh, these are I think about the best mix. They're two, three, five, sixties, uh, 18. And uh, I think they're the perfect mix between properly looking in proportion with a car and uh, actually being reasonably comfortable to ride on. That is it. Number one down. Let's get this car down. Right, onto the back. Now for lifting, I'm using a, an SGS is the brand and it's a three ton trolley jack. Uh, you'll see these dotted around workshops up and down the country now. It's a bit overkill for the Freelander 2. Uh, the Freelander itself really not weighing 
uh, needing much more than a one ton jack, frankly, on each corner, because you're only lifting one corner of the car, and 90% of the way goes back down through the vehicle anyway. But the point is, is I have a fairly chunky, heavy Land Rover Discovery 3 on the drive behind me, and um, I should have loosened these before I lifted it, but there you go. Um, the point being is that I had a Halfords 1.5 ton trolley jack, which lifts the corners of the Discovery, but uh, was never with perfect confidence. So I have gotten myself a jack that is massively overkill, but you can't be too safe, can you? The good thing is, is it comes, it's enormously heavy to move. I mean, the thing must weigh 40 kilos itself, but um, uh, it uh, comes with a nice big six inch jack pad on it, which gets under the chassis cross members nicely. Now the treads on these rear ones are surprisingly uh, hardly touched really. I mean, I bought all four new tires at exactly the same time, but the front ones, because it's uh, a four wheel drive car, admittedly, granted, but uh, overwhelmingly I use it on the road. And the result is that with the Haldex system, the way it operates is it only really chucks power to the rear uh, when it needs it, pr principally, uh, either when you tell the system to do it uh, via the train response uh, system or more commonly, when you lose a little bit of grip at the front, it'll send power to the rear. But the result being is that for a huge proportion of the time, of course, you're merely sending the power through the front wheels and the front wheels and the front tires take all the stress when you're going around the roundabouts and the like. So the front wheels have worn out. Now I did think about just switching the front to the rear, but that comes with its own problems. Uh, because if you have less grip on the rear of the car than you do on the front, uh, because the tyres are worn out on the back. Um, if you do hit some ice or a bit of black ice or some rain and the car loses control, you end up with the back end sliding out, uh, which is called oversteer, and that is uh, considerably more dangerous from a handling perspective than it is to have a bit of oversteer. So you're better off having the better tyres on the back of the car, uh, which is somewhat counterintuitive when you think about it, but nevertheless, that's the way it should be. So I've gone with just going straight for it and changing the wheels all around with the new tyres. All right, let's get her down and I shall spin the car around. All right, let me just tighten these once up. Just give them their little extra. Now the car's down. And the same with the front. the near side let's do exactly the same again Get her down. And let's tighten her up. What I'll do is I'll run it for a few miles, half a dozen or so, and then I shall go around tighten them all up. Right, last corner. There's a point to note, I'm actually going to flog these old 17s and looking at them. Online, I given two of the tyres are actually pretty good, as I say, the rear ones. Uh, I reckon I can probably get 100 quid or so for them, which isn't a huge amount, but given that, as I say, the tyres needed doing and the new set were only 525, including the new tyres, this will recoup possibly another 100 quid or so. 
uh, bringing the new ones down into a no-brainer category, really. Let's get the car down and get those cranked up a little. And I've got to say, I mean, just looking at them on the car now, it helps <laughs> that they're so clean and shiny. But even so, I can immediately see the difference visually that it's going to make to this car. And when the facelifted bumpers, the lights and the interior are sorted out as well, it's going to be pretty much as good as new. These last ones done here as well. So yeah, I am over the moon with those actually, absolutely over the moon with them. I think they're one of the nicest looking wheels on the Evoque and on the Freelander here, I've got to tell you, it has given it a whole different look. Uh, if we walk around the other side where I can't see the ridiculous primer on the bumper, um, I just think it looks so much smarter, so much younger, which is great. I'm going to just Quickly, uh, quickly pop out for a test ride and let you know how it feels with the 18 inches. Um, the one thing, the one very, very subtle difference with the Evoke wheels over the Freelander wheels is the track is just a few millimetres wider. It's about five mil wider on each side, so uh, about a centimetre overall. And it just gives it a slightly different stance and it feels the wheel arch just slightly better, but still being well within the limits of what Admiral tell me are fine from an insurance point of view, which is great. So I don't need to do anything other than having informed them that I've changed the wheels for an 18 inch uh, Land Rover fitment. But there we go. I'll, uh, yeah, let's get out in the car and see how it feels. So sitting in the car, I'm gonna pull off. Now there is talk on the forums of the difference in feel between 17, 18, 19 or 20 plus inch wheels. And I get it if I was switching to 20 or 22 inch wheels, but I'm slightly dubious about whether I'm gonna be able to feel any difference at all with these uh, 18 inches. So let's have a little look. Although, <laughs> I've got to tell you straight away, um, unless it's a uh, good old placebo effect, I don't know. But ultimately, yeah, it, it feels just pulling down the lanes here. And it's uh, you know, a reasonable tarmac road, but it certainly feels, yeah, it feels a little tighter. Um, the steering feels a bit more responsive as well. You know what, it could well be a placebo, I haven't got a clue, but ultimately uh, that's how it feels right now. I'm just gonna do a three point turn before I run over these kids on their bikes. Uh, let's do that, hang on. Uh, now turning circle or anything like that shouldn't be affected. I mean, the track is, as I say, 10 mil wider, but that's across the whole vehicle. I can't believe I've noticed any difference. Yeah, it does. It, it, the, you know what, I'll, I'll update you uh, in my next blog. Uh, once I've done some motorway driving on it and some fast A roads, but just driving around these uh, unmarked lanes here, uh, I can feel the car is um, feel the car is a little bit more perceptibly responsive. Yeah, I like it. Good. Okay, I am well chuffed with that. On to the next video. Please subscribe. I am about to stick a private plate on it as well to hide the age. It's got a 59 plate on it right now, but um, I'm going to stick on a lovely little private plate with my initials on it just to get you. Uh, uh, forgiven for not knowing quite how old this car is now, coming up to 12 years old. But uh, yeah, in the meantime, over and out. Thanks very much.